I'd like to welcome you all to uh, this next session, which is uh, entitled How the Inventor Fares from a Systems Perspective in Order to Transform an Invention into an Innovation. Uh, it's being led by Dr. Jeremy Horn, who is President Emeritus of the Southwest Area Division of the American Association for the Advancement of Science, AAAS. He's currently the Chief Executive Officer of the Inventors Assistance League, a nonprofit organization dedicated to helping independent inventors bring their creation to fruition. He resides in San Felipe, Baja, California, which is in Mexico, doing research and writing in the areas of logic as the language of innate order in the universe, uh, a project that's been going on for 40 years. Uh, I think I'm just going to agree. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, he's a member of several professional organizations, such as the American Association for the Advancement of Science, where he was president of its Southwest Area Division, uh, the Bioelectromagnetic Society, the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineer, uh, where he's a voting member of the Fiber Optic Technical Advisory Group, and he earned his PhD in philosophy at the University of Florida, which we will not hold against him, for those of us the University of South Florida, and his <laughs> Master of Political Science uh, in New Haven, Connecticut, his Bachelor of Arts in International Relationships, in International Relations at John Hopkins <laughs> University in Baltimore. The John Hopkins University, yes. except for the substitute. That's uh, he's <laughs> As well as well can get in any. <laughs> How the inventor fares. And I'm gonna, this is interesting, If you have any, if you can identify something and what it is not, you have a system. Now that's a philosophical approach. The reason why is that you have a relationship. You identify two things. Dialectically, you cannot have this without this other. You cannot, if I turn all the lights off in this room, and everybody's heard this probably phone before on You're not going to see anything. You have to have a contrast. You have, a, have to have something by which you're going to distinguish something. As soon as you can distinguish something, something and its other, you have a system. Your base is the most fundamental. I call it most, the most fundamental order there is. You have to have two. It's a binary <coughs> concept. As soon as you have that, you have the basis of a system. You can say that there's a relationship between something and what it is not. Whatever it may be, that's your basic system. And of course you have more complex you have systems of systems and on and on and on. Just to get an idea of what a system is. But I think logic, I teach it from a systems point of view. And I reduce everything to the binary world. So Phil's obviously you have heard some of my other presentations. So you know where I'm coming from on that. But anyway, I'm out there so much. Types of system, you have a static and dynamic. If I and, and, and I'm not sure if there is such a thing as, as a static system anyway, but that's for heuristic purposes. <coughs> dynamic, you have something that is homeostatic that is self-maintaining. And I'm not convinced that there's something that's homeostatic. It may be homeostatic for a while, but it's going to have to either adapt or not survive. This one feels like some background theoretical stuff. Now, the elements in our system are what I call the creator. I put that in quotes. 
Now I'm not sure, the person may ostensibly create something, but really it's not a creation because they already exist. The second element we're talking about in the system is the, the object or the process, and I can add an idea as well. The process we're gonna be talking about as the particular instance of something larger, which I'll be discussing down the road, especially tomorrow, the patent process. File and gets them approved and everything else is bureaucratic, whatever. Uh, in this country, of course, it's the United States, United States Patent and Trademark Office, and other countries, it's the European Union, and all over the world, we've got these very systems. In, our, this, in this country, we have the USPTO tests. Our system diagrammatically looks like this we have the so called creator coming in. Then we have this patent system, and then we emerge as an innovator, I'll get to that in a second, and you have the environment, which always occurs, and it's very simplistic, and there are other feedback loops and all kinds of other things you can say, you have internal system processes and on and on and on, but basically this is what you get. I have a question there. Help, help me understand more what creator is and what innovator is because I, I don't right, yeah, that's what this whole thing's about. I don't, I don't understand why they wouldn't be swapped, why the innovator doesn't drive it and the creator. Well, they did. Well, that's what happens when you have a cybernetic process, the innovator then builds upon that. But the idea of innovation as opposed to creation has to do with what I mean in a second is survivability. Because we're much, much more fundamental issue. I'm starting off. Innovation is an economical concept, and invention is a scientific concept. 
or originality is a scientific concept. And many, 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 at least the people that I met, is my, 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 my sample, okay? Science, scientists confuse originality with invention or with newness. The best example I can give that there is no originality as at all is the first uh, Excel, the first, uh, it, 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 there was no originality. It was the same book with two columns that the accountant used, translated to, ele to electronic sheet, okay? And that's it. So there was no originality, but it was a huge innovation. The, uh, Originality zero. Well, here's an example, a little humorous example. You will remember this. I saw you come across my desk, and I would love this. It's one of those giggly poems. You love this one. That, that, you and I went back to the email, and then you had a heart attack. I had across my desk a guy in an end. I know I signed an NDA and everything, but I'm going to tell you about it anyway. This is not a he comes across, everybody sees the back of the thing here, and they call Sweeper, his name is Sweeper. And that's what you call the vacuum cleaners, a Sweeper, carpet Sweeper, blah, 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 blah. This guy comes up with, uh, are you ready? A dog poop vac. He draws a picture, he has, has the audacity to draw the picture of the thing. Silhouette. He takes this thing and dog poop vac, the Sweeper. Sweeper invents a sweeper. It's going to be quick to answer the question in a minute. He sweeps the sidewalk with the dog poop. And as he says, he takes the sweeper and flips it over, she puts it in the bag, and flips it over her shoulder, and goes on his merry way. His dog poop back. Now, is that original? Well, you know, I don't know. You take the sweeper. I'm going to do this. Take the sweeper. To sweep the sidewalk, dog poop, and flip it over. Is that, is that, all right, I, I, okay, if I go down to the vacuum cleaner salesperson and, and say, you've got all these vacuum cleaners, and are they original? No, you've got to see them, I've got them. But can, if I take one of his vacuum cleaners, and I go out to the city, and I go sweep up, oh, dog, is that an original thing? Well, I guess the vacuum cleaner salesperson never would have thought of it for, for various reasons. Now, is that, is, it's like utility, and that's the thing in the U.S. patent trademark, and it gets really weird, the utility of it is that, okay, is that's original. That's his original thing, Let me give an example in this sense. And, uh, a study made in Israel about, I read about that 10 years ago, or maybe 12 years ago. There was a negative correlation in medical instruments between originality and innovation. Because the more original, the, 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 more, the more marketing required for the medi medical doctor to use it. So there is even a, 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 a negative correlation between, could be a negative correlation between originality and innovation. The more originality, the less possibility of innovation. So it's completely different concept. One is economic and the other one is scientific. You say, yeah, the thing is, it gets interesting, and we're going we're to discuss this a little bit further. You keep hitting an economic. See, now the, see, I talk about creator, you, you, this gets interesting. Mm -hmm. You have those, 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 and those. I mean, you, they create those. The creator has to create those. Yeah. And these are the problem is, you see. We're talking about is survivability. Yes. If it doesn't survive, yes. then it does not, that's, one, that's the whole point of this thing. It doesn't emerge as an innova innovation. You see, that's the problem, survivability. So basically, this survives. Obviously, you're wearing it. I'm wearing one of these, all in them, blah, 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 blah. That survived, so now that's an innovation. That was originally invented by what, 16, 1600s. Yeah. And so you had blah, 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 and so that was the invention. But now the fact that you're wearing and I'm wearing and you're wearing, that's now an innovation because it survives. The developing country does not need originality, they need yeah. innovation. Yeah. 
Because they need innovation well, in developing country. You know, we're and this is the paradox well, that well, developing country like Venezuela, from where I am, well, we're they are promoting the originality, but the originality can be used just in the United States and in the developing and the developed countries. What they have to promote is innovation, not originality. Yeah. Well, you're promoting, no, it promotes survivability. Though. It promotes survivability. Well, there's some issues. There's some issues. There's some issues. We're gonna we're gonna hash this thing out. We're gonna hash this thing out because I'm gonna put an idea in your head, and we're gonna have we're gonna have a discussion about this tomorrow. Because yeah. it started occurring to me after the boom. I said because I've done this before in a different context, and the other context started appearing to me this afternoon. I said, wait a minute, we're gonna discuss something else. The creator creates that, right? Now that survived, right? What we're gonna talk about is the survival. See, see, the, the, yeah, but the creator, her or himself is basically, is the creator or creator himself in innovation. And we're gonna have some fun with this one. We're gonna hold, just hold that thought. As Paul Harvey says, this is the, the rest of the story. We're gonna have the rest of the story tomorrow. And yes, but if, you can, if you can create, create well, those. Well, yeah, well, well, we're, 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 we're gonna have, we're gonna have, we're gonna have it out tomorrow. Because you are innovating the way to get innovation. We're gonna have it out tomorrow. Wait, wait. That's what he's trying to say now. Uh, excuse me, we have to have something to it. You are just raising really a point. Uh, when you specialize, yeah, with specialization you. leads to creation yes. or yes. innovation. Uh, Where would specialization fit in? Yeah, I don't see a way to get an innovation with a discipline, within a discipline. Okay. Innovation, you need a lot of entrepreneurship, and entrepreneurship you need a lot of, of Different disciplines combined. Yes. Okay, you got, you said that so I'm, you need I'm, a good manager to combine but, but, but different disciplines, or but, 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 you need yourself to be interdisciplinary subject. But wait for a second, you don't get caught in your own trap, I think. Good. What did I say about boundaries? Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, 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 so don't, don't worry about the discipline stuff right now. Because you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna get really caught in the block. That's my dreams and my nightmares. Yeah, 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 yeah. See what you're doing. What you're doing is this. You're thinking in terms of an object. I'm talking about process. Think dialectically. Don't think about this discipline stuff. It is very important. And we said earlier, because if you get to that discipline argument, you're gonna get to that issue of boundaries. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to go there. I want to go there where the process is. But remember, uh, uh, because you're going to get this thing about whether, whether it's this, this, or that. We can do that as intellectuals. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, we cannot do, do that to get innovations for someone I, 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 using I, I, the innovation. I know, I know but you can, you've got to get into that stuff when you're talking you're right. about. Yeah, you've got to get into this stuff right here. At the know. level of thinking, but not at the level of doing. Because when you do, you need to take what is yeah, existing. Don't, don't go there, you're going to get in your own trap. No, I, I didn't. Hell no, I don't do this. Is this? Yeah, just click Jeremy, on the IIS. I, I agree with I you am. at the level of thinking, but yeah, that yeah, yeah. That, that's not, not necessarily true at the level of doing. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, but when you get to doing, you're going to get a little but boundaries Jeremy, off. Jeremy, I just have one question for you. The sweeper, Jeremy, back to the sweeper. Somebody wants to, I'm not going to say the innovate word, but somebody wants to be innovative. And, and make a bigger hose and a bigger nozzle, but use the same engine, the same motor, and and use it for your purpose intended. Is that person indeed a creator? Are they an innovator? See, that's where, that's where you get free, free. Are they an inventor? What are well, they? Yeah, they're all in that sense. Because you, you know, it, it gets really weird. You're you know, mixing I, words. Huh? Yeah, yeah, so but, yeah. It's a lot of the This is going to be the end of the A lot of the but yeah, but it, it helps that. Now, but what I'm saying is that which gets to the language, you see, is how you, you, you name something to understand it. We're going to have that discussion tomorrow. And it gets into this stuff right here, how you want to see the world. If you want to see it that way, you name it that way. And you manipulate the symbols. I mean, Najib's definition of innovation is not mine. All right. It's the definition of innovation is crystal clear. But on the front end, creator, I think of creator, Inventor, innovator, innovator, all artists. I've never read any photographs. Can I go to say something? Photographs are interesting. Some of this is easy. Yes? Huh? Yes. You hate to be saying anything on creator, you a sculpture, you know, a poet. All of them are creators. One 
one space in the gender of creator is the inventor. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, we, we, we need to have a, we need to have a session on Baudrillard. Yeah, it's a, the, the, uh, the, the French philosopher and all this kind of like symbolism, how you come about stuff like that. We need to have uh, a down and out about that. Let's get on with this thing. We'll get to the, mm -hmm. we're doing the, we're doing the induction going to particular road to check. We're gonna have some fun tomorrow. It's gonna be in the morning too. I've had process, it's a mess. Go to the USPTO and see it, blah, God. I don't know about it. It's just what you gotta do to get some, uh, the property. We're gonna get to that in a second, too. We're gonna have some time. The patent is a necessary condition, uh, not yeah. sufficient for the innovation. Yeah, it's necessary, yeah, we have in to protect it. Yeah, in this system. Gonna be, it's gonna be stolen from you. Yeah, I'm gonna get to that. I, I, but it's I, necessary I, I that must be. Yeah, I'm covering all that, yeah. What about things like, um, <coughs> Okay, most people would consider the uh, polio vaccine an innovation, right? But that was not patented. No, and then, yeah, that's what happens. You get tra you get trade secrets and all that other stuff. You get uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken and all that stuff, and that's all trade secret. They're not patented, and it's how you protect protect it. It's, it's intellectual property and all that stuff. Uh, and I'm going to get to this in a second. It's not going to answer the question. Get some, get some, get some Infection, here we go. That's also that's etymology. You look them up online dictionary of etymology, and there they are. And that's kind of like what it is. What the basic thing we're trying to say, at least for the purposes of this discussion, is that innovation basically has to do with the survivability of something. It's like that those glasses. I'm wearing them and they have a utile or utility value, and because they've lasted, you didn't survive the tests or whatever the tests they are, they emerge, they survive, and therefore they're innovations. It's essentially what it is. You say it's an economic term, yeah, in that limited sense, but we're going to have some fun more about that. Mm. If not, it will not survive. It's not only, yeah, but it's not only economics. Oh, no, no, yeah, I, I, I. I agree with you, but it's yeah, need to be, yeah. to survive, you need the economical part of it. In this system, in this system, here are system examples. We're talking about this system, this system. You're right. All right, this is gonna, this is gonna get where it gets dicey. It starts to get dicey in terms of property. You've gotta have it your property before it survives because you're dealing with a patent system. I have problems with this. A lot of problems with this. this. Here are some of the problems. What I've done is kind of broken this apart a little bit. We have the Aristotelian idea of property. It's very simplistic. It's an attribute. A little bit of philosophy. What is that? What is that? What is that? What is this? This has purple, blue, white, silver, and a blind. I don't know what all that is. That's an individual <coughs> possessing those attributes so you know what it is. And this dive is purely dialectic. Something and what it has in order to assume its identity. That which it has in order to assume its identity are considered properties from the Aristotelian point of view. Those who know logic, it is the capital letter like a P and then the small letter X. X being the individual, P being the property. That's the symbolism, that's the symbolic logic part of it. So the individual, you cannot conceive of the individual without the property. You cannot conceive of the property without something possessing it, i.e. It's dialectic. One has to have another in order for that to exist. That is the system. It's your most fundamental system. That's the most fundamental law of dialectics. DC, how did a guy named God for DC at Hawkins? Except no substitutes. Had to get that in there. That which is necessary for something to survive is related there for Aristotle. A plant. 
people who work on property. Very much like walking. No, but he certainly wasn't walking. That which is necessary for something to survive, like the soil is a plant's property. It needs soil to survive, nutrients to survive. This gets interesting. What do I need to survive? Do I need six motorboats and a billion dollar home to survive? I guess so, that's your property. That's how they get away with that argument. That's how people Wall Street get away with theirs. They need all that stuff. Of course, we remember that my English teachers talk about wants and needs. Be careful there. We'll get to that later. Locke. Marx was not the origin, originator of the labor theory of value, but it survived labor theory of value. So that's an innovation. That which a person through their own labor has transformed from a state of nature into something else. That is the labor theory of value that comes out of the second treaties of civil government, law of property. That's the most revolutionary work. That's more revolutionary than Marx ever hoped to be. If you want, I always used to carry that in the back of my pocket. I used to carry a copy of, of property. That's where Marx got it. That's where everybody else got it, basically. That was the invention, but it survived, that's for sure, that's for sure. If I take something, I take that dog poop up, that from that vacuum cleaner, clean it up, take that, and I come out with something, and I make something with a horrible, and I take, take from a state of nature, and transform it, that's my property, all of it, the whole pile. So that's the labor theory of value. Philosophical. That which gives an individual's identity. That example I gave there. Deeper question. So, without being able to claim property as an individual, what then is the status of the individual? That's the question I have to ask. We're going to be addressing that directly tomorrow. It's in different ways. I don't think anybody here. I, I, that, I'm hoping that's an invention, and I hope it will become an innovation. So we have a very interesting as a somewhat of a sidebar. James Burnham, the manager of Revolution 1948, I think it was. It's very interesting that we take the idea of this property thing to break it down to ownership, control, and possession. Ownership means that you get the direct benefits from it. Whatever it may be. Economic, utile, or whatever, you get the benefits from it. This is maybe for heuristic purposes, but I think it's useful. Control means you're able to manipulate, to do something with it. You may not get the benefits of it. Control basically means having a place like the, uh, man the, the managers. And then you'll tell what's going to happen with the factory, something like that. They don't, may not get the benefits from it, but they are able to manipulate and do whatever. So the last one is the possession. The workers are actually standing at the machines. Obviously, they don't get the benefit out of it. And they serve no control. Jim, I would like just you know, to separate, if possible, the, the philosophical from the legal. Because if you cannot have a patent on, on, on Newton laws, not even. Oh, yeah, I, I, I know that. Yeah, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are, you are right about that. I'm just. I'm just thinking this whole idea of the property in there just for a discussion of the whole concept of property and how it might relate. Okay. That's all I'm doing. No, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm getting, you, I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting to that. You are not really right in the philosophical sense, but you yeah, might not exactly. go in the legal but, part. But I am a boss. Don't be Microsoft. Do a limit. <laughs> Can't do a limit stick to text. Whoops! I don't get back. Previous. Hey, it worked. There's a three step process in this system. You have to evaluate the idea and protect it from market. That's what I do with the better assistance. www.inventions.org. There it is. Okay, oh, that's the number of my head. But I, you did the whole program, and that's what you do. And that's where the PT 
CEO says if you read between the lines, you've got to evaluate what you've got, your creation, then you protect it. Okay, I'll do that in a second. Then you mark it. How do we do this? Go through and find out about the idea itself. Just as you said, we cannot see I've answered the question. And this is what I used to say to students. I know that you guys have followed along, guys and gals have followed along because you anticipate what's happening by asking the question. So great. We're on track. Process machine, article manufacturer, this is right out of the PTO website. It cannot be laws of nature, as you said, physical phenomenon, abstract ideas. So in other words, if you cannot have those, they cannot be your property in this system. Remember, we're talking about systems. We not talk about various parameters. These are the parameters that will help you determine what property will be. I introduced that earlier discussion about what property is generally as a context against, or a background against which this could be evaluated. This is a narrow sense of what I was talking about earlier philosophically. Okay, so that's why I did that. Process machine, article manufacturer, blah, 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 it cannot be so clear. That's evaluation. Now, some other standards. There's a problem with this. Can anybody pick up on it? There's a weasel, yeah, yeah, there's a weasel way out of it. So we a way out of this. Now, uh, a DVD rewinder. Now, technically, I've heard of it. That apparently, when you return movies, I don't know, I, I don't want to go to Blockbuster's background. Anybody that's not background, all right, you go to the, and you get the DVD, and apparently, that you put the DVD, and some of these DVD players evidently will stop. If you stop the DVD halfway through, the chip on the DVD player will tell you where you stop. So you go back, you, do, you come back a few months later, you put the DVD back into that machine, it will pick up where you left off. So I suppose in that sense, that you can rewind a DVD. That's the only sense I know how you can rewind a DVD, but you've got to reset the chip, it's not resetting the DVD, obviously. So this thing here, it oh, sort of should have looked that way, I don't think. But anyway, yeah. Now, it's going to be workable. It can't be perpetual motion machines. It's going to be ethical. You know, you don't go out and make uh, instruments to break into houses and do details like that. Uh, practical. Don't, you don't want to do nothing. Machine that does that, that, whatever it wants to, to do something practical. Useful. Is a dog poop fact useful? I don't know. You're living in New York. Okay, now it might be. And is it novel? Of course, that's obvious too. So there it is, and you can copy it on those, whatever. I've seen a lot of stuff coming here. Watch my desk. Well, anyway, protection. All right, those are the things that people think they can do. They can mail and sell the invention and all the other things and so forth. No, you've got to file something, especially with the American Invents Act, which I think might be the next one. What is it? I don't know what it is first. It's your right to get the benefits. Remember when we talked about property? That's why I put that in, James Byrne. I like in that sense. Before we got seen and started writing all this right big crap. Ownership of patent is the right of the owner. And what is the owner? The owner who is the one who gets the direct benefits. You exclude others from making, using, offering for sale, blah, blah, blah. okay? And um, ownership does not furnish owner with the right to make, use, or offer for sale the import import the claim invention because of maybe other legal considerations in case we're so that's fairly expanded the version of what a patent is. American Vents Act finally the United States decided to come into the 21st century or 20th century because other countries had their filing requirements. You've got to file something to say that you are the originator of the idea. Up until the American Vents Act was took effect, uh, what was it, 16th of March, 2013. The various parts came to various beings. But anyway, that was the part we're talking about, you had to file something. And before you could scribble in a notebook, anything you wanted there, not really anything that I'm sorry. 
and you can take that notebook, and then you can come out at any time and say, I'm the originator of the idea. So if I file something, let's say, on the 3rd of April, 2010, and then I came out with this notebook, and I can present the notebook in 2011, for example, I would be getting the patent, not the one who actually filed something, which was unfair, obviously. But that's where this country was. Present the notebook in principle, and you can get your patent if the description of it. That's the whole key to this thing. You have to have a description that means something. You can do it one or two ways. You can do it one or two ways. You can do a PPA, provisional patent application, or a patent. And those are the benefits and the disadvantages and stuff like that. Go to the PTO and become a PPA basically is $65 for a micro entity, $120 for a small entity. File this thing, and then you get a patent pending, and you say, "Okay, don't do anything because I got a patent pending." Blah blah blah. You know that drill pretty well. And those that you got the patent, though, is more expensive lawyers or something like that. It costs about three, four, five, six thousand dollars, depending on what it is. Good people, you have to do a patent search and all the other good stuff. The main thing about whatever you file, be a PPA, write it in a notebook, or whatever you want to do, the notebook now is corroborative evidence. You have to have a good description. If I describe this as a duck, it's not going to go very far. If you want to describe this as a container, a black container with flexible walls, a enclosure, blah, 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 it would be somewhat generic but very precise about what it is. It's not like a contradiction. Like the terms you use are having to be in such a way that you have to be really mouth terms, but they, you've got to know what it is. You've got to be able to pick up the description without anybody around. The document itself is going to allow you to fill this thing, create it, whatever it is, and use it and explain the theory in it. You can do it just by that document alone. The document has done its job. Otherwise, it's junk. Come back in a second. Anybody can get a PPA, and I did this. I said, okay, well, PPA, go all the board, all these websites, and they tell you how to file a PPA, blah, blah, lawyers' websites, too. I filed one of the Donald Duck, the greatest duck, living in the White House. <coughs> so Donald Duck owed $120 because of the micro entity he didn't come in at that time. But I came over here a couple times at conferences and I almost called him visiting once and said, this damn duck has got to pay it to me. Yeah. Of course, what I attached to the thing was an article out of science, and then there was some other thing. The first thing I did was a draw program on the computer back in 1994, some cartoon. And I would look at the drawings, and then the description was an article out of science, and it was called a quacker whacker. And all I needed to do was get those documents in PDF format, upload them, and then fill out the forms, and I was ready to go. And I had my PPA, and I could claim a Patent pending status. That is called a cracker whacker. Anybody can file it. Proof of the pudding, there it is. We just said, pay 120 bucks. I built the government. Built somebody. I forget what it was. All right, you get your PPA, and there it, there it is. You've got patent pending status, and then you've got your, prop, your pending property claim. The real property claim then comes by getting the patent. You have to file that based on this, and do a bunch of mechanical things. And then, after a few thousand bucks to a slip lawyer, then you file it, you get your patent, and then you've got your intellectual property. And then you get the direct benefits thereof, and then you go market, like we shall get into how you protect them. Assuming, assuming you get a patent. First go around, 87% of all patent applications are rejected. I think the second go around is 57 or something like that. So basically, 7 or 8% of it is what it is, or accepted. You've got to go through all kinds of probably most way else to get the patent. But you do, you get a lot of people to get the patent. You get patent trolls out there that they'll do, they'll take the, that you have as your patent, and go and start finding prior art and sue you. And usually the individual does not have the resources to defend and they give up. 
painting. So it's a legal battle. Uh, somebody could find prior art out there. The expiration of the patents is 20 years. So you only have the property getting you direct benefits at more than 20 years and the maintenance of the rentals. Jeremy, this is thought, this again goes back to, I think, the benefit thing is that. Is it benefit or potential benefit? Because it hasn't been really realized yet. And that's why over the years, we've many times gone up the path from the intellectual property route. And then from a business standpoint, we stopped by the time we filed our sixth or seventh international. We paid our attorneys uh, three or four college tuitions to their kids to do this. And then we basically say, listen, it's gonna cost us a million dollars to defend this patent. What we really wanna do is be first mover. And so, as opposed to putting our recipe file out for everybody to follow, let's put all the money that we put into patents and let's market the hell out of this thing and develop it. Exactly. We'll make money, we'll be the gold standard. By the time everybody catches up, there's plenty of room for both Pepsi and Coke. So, uh, you know. Another aspect of it though, is that you might start the process and by that process itself, you can do other things. And the things you do do, maybe, so it may not be a monetary benefit, but it might be some other benefit, some procedural benefit, something like that, that you might get by filing these things. And you, yeah, you may not go through the go to the mat defending it like that, but it's out there and say, okay, now we keep the dogs in the for a while until we get the door secured with her. And that itself would be a benefit. So it may not be a monetary benefit. Jeremy, let me make the general advocate. Yeah. It is not economic benefit, it is not innovation. And that's what we're going to have a discussion tomorrow. No, there's no discussion. <laughs> it's not innovation. I don't understand. Like, that's like the polio vaccine wasn't economic benefit, but it was an innovation. It was put out there so everyone would bring their to, to Oh, okay, 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 I got it. Okay. Yeah. Because there is no benefit, but everyone, or most, or a lot of people are using it. So it's an so innovation, you're right. right. Yeah. I was mistaken. No, that's, you're that's, right. That's kind of the right. You're right. That. <laughs> but, but the people using it, they are having material benefits. For the society benefits. Because they are no, using no, it well. materially. Yeah. So there's some other So the money is not in the pocket of the inventor, but somehow is in the pocket of the user. Right. So this is exactly as developing an information system. The programmer is sometimes is a student, it's not earning right, anything, right. but the user of the system is getting the benefit. Yeah. It's an economical one. Yeah. Now, what we're doing. But you're right. Thank you for the. Yeah, but what, what, what we're doing is this. We have okay. early and this is the system that we're talking about. And you're right within the system constraints. But what we're going to do is we're going to take some of these terms, and you know as well as I do, I can identify system, 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 system. And I can take the same term. Apply it to various systems at a meta level. Yes, of course. That's what we're going to do tomorrow. That's what we're going to do tomorrow. So this is the best way to create a confusion. Oh boy! <laughs> <laughs> can't understand what's going on. Sorry, sorry. You should have it at the back of your mind. We have economic benefits and non-economic benefits. Yeah, another uh, uh, Yes, yes. Always think of when you say <laughs> economic benefit. Always think of economic benefit and non-economic benefit, direct benefit and indirect benefit. Yes. We factor everything into a bowl. At the end of this, we have multiplier effects, yeah. and that becomes economic. Yeah. That was why I think. Yeah. System A, system B. Okay. Now that obviously, you see what's inside that system and what it does, right? Yeah. You see what's inside that system. And what yeah. It does. What's the commonality of those two? What's the com what's common to those systems? That then oh, they're all, they're, it's an intersecting set, right? The two in intersecting sets, right? Yeah. What's common to them? To pick out one thing is common. Yeah, the size. Huh? Uh, so, okay. Size. All right, well, you, so you say pick, so pick some particular property. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the concept of size and apply it to both systems, right? Yeah. That's what we're going to do tomorrow. I agree with all what you said, but this, if you add implicit or explicit. Yeah, implicit or explicit. Okay? That's what we're going to do tomorrow. Because innovation, by definition, needs survival. Anything that needs survival needs a direct or indirect, explicit or implicit material benefit. Well, 
but be careful, about, be, be careful about material benefits because there are other benefits mm -hmm. besides material. And non material. Yeah, yeah. We're going to hit that. We're going to hit that. Even if you are right, depends on what you understand by matter. Yeah, be careful. Be, make sure. Be, identify the I symptoms. understand by matter, but it's opposite to spirit. But this is my problem. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, but, but, yeah. but what, what he's saying is identify the system within which you're talking. That's what I'm saying. Identify the system. We're talking about a specific system here. We're talking about the patent system. But what, as I said earlier to begin with, this it, we're doing induction. I gave an example. I'll give, it, I'll give you something now. This is what we did last year. We start off with, we talk about the, the, the generalized from the specific, and that's what we're going to be doing. We take, it's like technology. Technology and science. Now, technologies, technologies are examples, the instantiations of the concept of science. That's what we're going to do. So we take an example, which we just did here, the patent, blah, 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 what I did here, and we can take that and generalize for something tomorrow. We're going to have a little fun tomorrow. In the morning, we can ever have fun in the morning. We'll go tomorrow. Marketing, uh, you know all about that. Uh, all right, let me dismiss that real fast. All right, tomorrow, so we this is this an advertisement for tomorrow. See, I'm build everybody up. I'm advertising the hell out of this one. We talk about, see, so what you're saying is absolutely right. You see, what you're absolutely saying is right. I like your comments. Because we get stuck in the economics. You know, I've gone down the table on this one. Talk about economics. You know, you're a great guy. You really are. You really are. You know, the thing is, I'm a philosopher. That's why I'm coming from. And you, you have to start off with something like economics, you need to be reading our biology, your chemistry, your education, whatever it would be. And what I'm saying, your methodology to develop within that instance, extrapolate to the larger world. And it's, it's not simply this discipline or that discipline or that discipline, it's a process. You get the process down in one area. You have logic, be it your business, be it whatever you're doing or you're doing, and you say, can I take that process? Can I go outside that area? There are no boundaries. Boundaries are heuristic. Remember Heisenberg? Remember the double slit experiment and all that good stuff? See, what he's saying, he's trying to, he's taking one little thing, and this is a co problem that's common to all of us. And you can go from one area to the next to the next. And it's, it, it's I, I think there are innate structures. I'll go for it. I think there are innate processes. Logic is a language in any innate order in the universe. I'll go that far. So what I'm saying is that you talk about Heisenberg or Church's theorem or anything else, it's the same bloody problem. And you say, you, you, you impose your own reality. Which of those two slits is that part of the go through? You, know, you determine that basically. You were talking with Wheeler about this going around and around, obviously. And that's what you do. You look at that photo going through. You're the one that this is what's really weird about this stuff. And you remember calculus. What do you do with calculus, really? And that's what why was do is kind of figure this out. What you're doing is you are setting those limits. That's what he's all about. That's what he's trying to do. He's trying to say, which we, we, we right? Is that that's a second order cybernetics. You've got to introduce the one into the system. You can't get out of your own box. It's the same damn problem. So you take your process and you kind of learn your own little discipline, you play your little box, blah, 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 blah. And then you say, okay, can I take that? And I'm going to tell what I've learned in that thing, whatever that is. I'm going to go to some other area. It's not your discipline. It's an interdisciplinary stuff. It's important. You can talk about that a lot. It's not about interdisciplinary anything. Really. That's the secret, secret of this whole damn thing. It's what you learn in your process yourself and getting to know about getting to know yourself. And you go out in an inductive way and go to visit all these other areas. You take you, your processes, and all that thing. Good old Heisenberg again, it's the same problem, the calculus, whatever it may be, and then you going out there and taking your identity and going out there and your reference frame. So you're developing your reference frame. That's this patent world, your own reference frame. Or something like reference frame. You take that world and you go out and give it another world. And you might develop another reference frame from that. And that there's no boundaries in these worlds. The process boundaries. That's what that's what 
that's what uh, the white is all about. The process of reality. It's not about the fact that there are no boundaries, getting back to that thing with the, uh, with the color spectrum. And so you, you may see 450 angstroms, you may see 451. See, it's perspective. There are no boundaries. You can measure, then you can measure an instrument. You're going to measure angstrom values, okay? All right, you're going to all these little, in a meter, the way the hell a meter looks like, you've got these little lines in the meter, right? You've got the same problem. So there is 450 or 451, and then you start narrowing it down, and narrowing it down, there's a line that divides 450 from 451, right? Now, you're going to tell me where the hell the boundary is, 450.5. Let's go there. Okay, now we, 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 you, you take that logic, you keep cutting it and cutting it and cutting it. You tell me where the boundaries. See, there are no boundaries. It's all subjective. You oppose the boundary. If you want to call 450, be my guest. Ditto. Getting all of them out and waiting for your signature. Oh, shit. <laughs> Some friggin' bureaucrat in here. Yeah. Where? Where? Oh, it's a time again. Holy shit. <laughs> where the Oh, but he's a hey, certificate. Hey, just I would on. like to link to make some uh, try, try, at least try. Oh my God! I'll sign that one too. Between any, any this, more? Uh, talk and, the, and what the workshop uh, on Friday. So what's this here? Which will be related to educational innovation and entrepreneurship. Here we go. I feel important. <laughs> educational innovation and entrepreneurship. And uh, oh, no. No, this Dr. Gil is, is going to present in the, real world. the innovation they got in their university I'm a philosopher. and uh, I'll be the way they are doing that. We're uh, they are doing the work uh, of entrepreneurship. Well, Maybe without knowing that they are doing that. Well, this is an innovation. To be an innovation, not just an idea of the doctorate. Just the idea and write the paper. Good one. About the idea and so they, to make it happen, you need explicit or implicit entrepreneurship. If not, you're not gonna have the innovation. You're just gonna have no idea about how to make the operation. So this is what he is gonna do and I would beg him to emphasize about your suffering. Yeah. <laughs> because entrepreneurship has suffering, requires psychological faculties, psych psychological uh, skills, even more than intellectual skills. If you don't have this psychological skill, you're not going to be a good entrepreneur. So you need that in order to transform a new idea in an innovation being in news, you have to make this transformation. And this transformation, as long as I know, require psychological, uh, 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 not just intellectual, but psychological faculties and skills. So if you can emphasize in that, because you have here an academic mostly an academic you know, people that they usually work with their intellect but not with psychological energies. Not necessarily with this, their psychological this, energies. This is the first time I've ever been asked to basically talk about my pain in a workshop. <laughs> but <laughs> I mean, I cannot imagine entrepreneurship without pain. Okay. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong. Oh, you've got to be careful about it here. You've got to be careful about it. Talked about utility, survivability, and stuff like that. Well, again, we're going to get on this one. Get yeah, rich. And we're, we're going to get asked what utility is. You see, it's and survivability. Uh, yeah. Now, does that, does, 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 